Yeah. I um I I work and uh, do private prosecutions. What we are saying is that uh, when we do our investigations and need to give recommendations to the ODPP, we have to wait until the ODPP now uh, either agrees with our recommendations or returns the file to us to ask us to add on the evidence that he thinks perhaps does not meet, meet the threshold. And w w during that process, because sometimes we finish our investigations very quickly, most of the investigations are over. But as you have heard from the figures, the files that are pending before the ODPP are too many. And we continue doing our investigations and forwarding our recommendations there. That's why we were asking for prosecutorial powers. So, Waiganju? Yes. Those, some of those files can stay there forever? Yes. Yes. In theory? Sometimes in really theory. Yeah. They, sometimes in theory they will stay there forever. Sometimes when they go to court, they will be withdrawn without reference to the independent bodies in yeah. can, you, can you do us a favor, Waiganju? Can you give us an analysis yes. of the files that you have taken to the DPP? Yes. Certainly. Those that have been prosecuted and those that are still pending. That will be done right away, uh, Chair. Mm. The, we have our CEO here who is in charge of the Secretariat and we will give out uh, those uh, figures. Uh, but on to the matter that was also brought forth on the extrajudicial hearings, we would also want this committee to take extrajudicial hearings uh, in law now, registratively, from MANDA. Yeah, MANDA extrajudicial hearing. We want a demarcation in law because we talk about extrajudicial hearings and there is also MANDA. So we want a clarity in that and that can only be found in law. And then on abductions, we want a clear reference between abduction and enforced disappearance because the law is broad. We do not have a clear cut law when you say, because you cannot, sometimes you, there's an abduction and then you reappear. So you have disappeared, but you have appeared. So we are not clear on when are you abducted or when there is an enforced disappearance. The president also assured us that we would be carrying out an inquest, an inquiry on enforced disappearance and extrajudicial killings. So we want that to come forth so that the citizens can come and give their stories. Because the files are many, we have uh, post-mortem reports, uh, we have a challenge of witnesses coming to us because also the witness uh, protection program does not have sufficient budget to cover our witnesses. We have lost the witnesses uh, clearly when we have good cases. So those are some of the challenges we have. And I want to leave it now so that uh, you can get the actual figures from our CEO. Yes, you're the CEO, unless otherwise. Uh, I don't want to repeat uh, what has already been spoken to, uh, but probably just to clarify on the issue of the command responsibility, uh, that uh, as I pour for the first time, innovatively together with the, the DPP, uh, we've been able to take a case to court. Actually, the Bipendo case is a case in court where 12 senior police officers uh, from county commanders are now in court. And that is by way of us taking the responsibility higher, you know, beyond the constables on the ground. So this is, this is a live matter which is currently in court, and uh, we will be able to see uh, the progression of that uh, case in court. Um, I, I don't know, Chair, you may wish to speak to the IET question. I'll leave that to, to the Chair. Um, on the issue of extrajudicial killings, we have, uh, of course, what has been explained by Honorable Waiganjo, uh, but beyond that, as an authority, we, we, have, we have clarity on what we, we, we are doing. The cases we are able to investigate where it has been determined through investigations that uh, we are able to identify uh, the people responsible in those enforced disappearance or in extrajudicial killing have been taken through uh, uh, investigations. However, where we are not able to determine uh, directly the police involvement, the commission or the authority has decided that it will undertake public inquiry.
which will be able to, uh, you know, to determine exactly the circumstances and also uh, determine accountability. So I think that is all I would want to clarify. When you are still on the floor, yes. Uh, what about the other? You see, when you stretch your imagination in terms of the electoral injustices, yes. There, there were complaints here by IBC. Yes. The officers were assaulted, murdered, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yes. There has been little police action. Can you please also look into why there is police inaction on uh, complaints filed by IBC commissioners and the commission itself on part of the abductions, murder, uh, assault, uh, and other other vestiges against the law? Secondly. I remember there are these men who are working in the U in the KK Secretariat, the Indian Nationals, mm -hmm. who were actually abducted by the DCI mm -hmm. and were killed in some, some container. They had a killing container somewhere. Uh, what is the extent of the fate of those men from the DCI? Okay, maybe picking up on the last one about the Indians. I think this is a matter, again, which is, of course, in court. And uh, between IPOA and the DCI, uh, we were able to make uh, a presentation, and I think I would rather ask the head of legal to speak to that matter with clarity. Yes, thank you. Um, as the CEO has stated, that the matter is uh, is currently in court. The matter is being handled by, of course, IPO and also the Internal Affairs Unit of the National Police Service is uh, dealing with that investigation, and uh, the matter is currently um, in court. On the issue of uh, IBC, yes, uh, there were uh, the reports, of course, uh, cases we are handling where IBC officers were assaulted, uh, by, uh, you know, allegedly by police. A case we are handling is the case of uh, the IBC uh, officer in Wajia, and uh, we have made a, a very uh, advanced uh, investigation on this and these are matters which are basically